<laughs> oh, it's so nice to know <laughs> that people care about us at this place. <laughs> so good to see all of you. Larry's been out of shape and I'm tickled. <laughs> And here he is, folks, old Yaller. <laughs> we'll explain that in a couple of minutes. Well, yeah, I guess I am kind of appropriate <laughs> yes, you today, are. aren't Either I? Either that or you're a banana in disguise. <laughs> Dear Laban and Larry, several months ago, my husband heard me laughing at your show. Come in to watch, and now we both are hooked. We love your show. Please send us your recipes for show number blah, 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 self-stamped envelope. Thanks so much. Mary and Bill Barber of Covington, Virginia. Thank you very much. We're glad, and we're glad you enjoy laughing with us, and, and not at us. I love letters like this. Love Dear letters. Cook and cheat. Yeah, love letter in the sand. Oh. I am a faithful viewer and would like to have the following show recipes. So and so and so. Mom says I may only be nine, but I can cook. Thanks for the show and the recipes. And that's from Emily Warman. In Blacksburg, Virginia. Well, well, Emily, thanks, and we're we think all kids ought to be able to cook, especially you little bitty ones that can't hold on to the raw eggs. Mm -hmm. Just have a good time in the kitchen. Go on in there right now and tell mom you want to cook what you saw on cooking cheap. Well, here's a lady that had just a couple of little suggestions to help me along. Dear Larry, last Saturday you cooked Swedish meatballs. You said. The sauce tasted like grapes. Use apple jelly instead of grape jelly, and it will taste like, it won't taste like grapes or apples because apples don't have that much taste. Neither does Laban. <laughs> and I use two cans of Chef Boyardee pizza sauce with cheese if you can find it instead of the ketchup. It is hard to find. What, also use cracker crumbs instead of the bread crumbs quarter cup, you can roll them out with a rolling pin. Also, you take up too much time chopping vegetables. <laughs> Do that ahead of time and you will have time to cook. You can cook it on top of the stove, too. Keep up your silly ways. Edith Johnson of Collingsville, Virginia, or Collinsville, I'm not sure, says Collingsville, wrote all of that on a little bitty card. <laughs> This woman used to work for the CIA. She'd uh -huh. write a lot of stuff on <laughs> pins and needles. And thank you for Does all the suggestions. Do the name Reba Ashworth ring a bell with you? No, no, I think she's, uh... Well, you think you had trouble with the grape jelly. Reba wrote it. She said, enjoyed seeing my recipe, Chuck Bake, on TV. You oh, I didn't that? do that yes. one, thank heavens. Boy, did you add the onions. She said, I don't really like them, but my family does. For that amount of onions, you should have used about twice the amount of ketchup, Worcestershire sauce. <laughs> Otherwise, all you taste is onions and lemons. And mm. Reva, you're right. That's, yeah, right. that's what it tastes also, like. Also, you might want to know that a lot of times I use one to two tablespoons of lemon juice in place of the lemons just for convenience. Mm -hmm. And uh, thought you might uh, add that to the recipe if anyone writes in. Sorry, Larry didn't seem to like it real well. <laughs> but I still like now, you, wait too. wait a minute. You said I didn't like it real well. <laughs> as far as I'm concerned, you all are the most entertaining and amusing, I almost said loony, uh. cooking show on TV anywhere. Hope you stay around forever or 25 years, whichever comes first. Well, Reva, thank you. And we hope we do, too, <laughs> whichever comes first. I think I'll hold out for 25. What's that on your plate? Oh. It's just something you're oh. serving this year. How on earth are we going to do? <laughs> what is a battery in my plate? Maureen, I'll swear. Our yeah. sound lady put a new battery in my heart a while ago <laughs> and left the battery right in my plate. Now, I've got to eat off of this plate later well, on. I'll eat I'll off swear. the battery instead. I'm leaving. Goodbye. Well, no, <laughs> Let's I'm go not. over here to I'm the kitchen. Stuck in the chair. <laughs> oh, good. I wanted to have you stuck in that chair for the longest kind of time. Uh, I'm going to do corn cakes sent in by. Patty James of Coburn, Virginia. Corn cakes. Corn this, cakes. And this is a little different kind of corn cakes. It uses Ritz crackers. Mm -hmm. And I, I made a very interesting discovery about, about these crackers. Mm -hmm. You know, you can get three roll ones, and then you can get four roll ones uh -huh. like this. And the four roll ones only cost a few cents more than the $1.99 I paid for this, uh -huh. the four roll ones. Well, I aren't mean, you? Oh, wait a minute. That isn't what I meant to say. No, the four roll ones only cost a few cents more than the three roll ones do. 
So, hey, there was a Mr. bargain. Mr. Shopper lives. I know it's true. I, I watch what I'm doing. So. And what else are you doing? Well, I'm going to do two recipes, so I guess I better get started yeah. on the first one. First no thing idea. I got to do is uh, take a roll of Ritz crackers from a three-roll box. Well, I looked at the boxes, and they're all the same height, so therefore it doesn't matter. You can take a roll from a four roll box too if you want to. And I'm going to crush them all up right now with uh, a rolling pin after I get finished beating Johnson over the head with it. <laughs> I'm sorry, I shouldn't I have said that. I have been a little so saucy rough. today and I just don't know why. <laughs> My car blew up on the way to work this morning, that's why. And after a while I'm going to give out you the name of the people that I bought it from. It <laughs> where you bought no, it? I don't. Uh-huh, I guess no, not. No, I uh -huh. certainly don't. No, I don't even want to go another step further with this conversation. <laughs> you can see the dollar bills fairly going out of my eyes. Uh-huh. All right, that's half of them. Here's the rest of them. Don't make this a big deal. Just throw them down there and smush them. Get it over with. A couple of seconds. This isn't going to take very long. And while I'm doing that, is this thing heating up? Ooh, Ooh it, it is. Would, okay, yeah. it's just mm -hmm. right. I'm heating up my griddle because we're going to, these are griddle type cakes. I'll just do them right on top of our griddle here. Put a little bit of oil on there or whatever. All right, now there you go. That's an entire roll of them things. I've got so much junk here, I can't keep up to it. But then I never could and it doesn't matter. That's an awful lot of that stuff. Sort of like a cornmeal, isn't it? Mm -hmm. And in essence, it sort of is a cornmeal, I suppose. Just take that and just rake it all out down in there. There's a malodor over here somewhere. I don't know what it is. Anyway, malodor. Mm-hmm. Something. Something. I don't know what it is. Coming on Maybe strong it's down. Maybe over here. Well, it is. And a can of creamed corn. I'm gonna open that up. Oh boy, this one. My favorite opener. Well, it's working right friskily today. This is creamed corn. Remind me to smile once in a while today, Doris. Smile. Put that in there. Mmm, that looks good. And then two eggs beaten. Oh! Oh! Sound effects by Mr. Johnson. A couple of minutes, by the way, we'll tell you where yellow veggies come from. We're not going to do that just this minute. Want to keep you waiting. Put that in there. Also. Oh, how terrible. I got a big wad of it on my little salt and pepper and oil for frying. Okay, what we do is we'll just put a little bit of oil on here. This should be hot now. Oh, it is. Well, that thing doesn't take oil. Look at that. It just all rolls off. What am I supposed to do with it? What? Look, oh, the oil just oh. kind of rolls and off of it. Well, it'll roll Look off at of it. it. Look too. at it. There it goes. Well, that's the strangest thing I've ever seen. Looks like, well, I just don't know what it looks like. Well, let me mix this all up here. We'll see if this works. <laughs> if I can't get any oil on it, how am I going to cook well, anything? Let me show you. We'll just pull it up. Yeah. All right, you put them in, add the rest of the ingredients, stir well. You should have pancake like batter. Yeah, that's pancake like batter, all right. All right, let's, let's see if this stuff works. And then what you do, it, what? Salt and pepper. Oh yeah, a little salt and pepper. Yeah, a little salt and pepper. Put a little salt and pepper in there too while you're. <laughs> oh, the oil is going to burn up on the griddle. Oh, it, it, it'll be all right. A little, a little of that. You don't want to put too much salt in this. I'll tell you why. Because this corn's got a ton of salt in it. I know. I had it happen to me one day. And now what we'll do is spoon some of this out there. Woo! Listen to her sizzle. I'm going to do me a couple. Anyone worth the salt in the kitchen can have at least three griddle cakes going simultaneously. And what we're going to do now is just going to let them things fry for a couple of seconds. Maybe I just better leave them alone. Uh, I, I don't think I'd I think I better keep my hands off of them. Now here, let me show you something when you're doing griddle cakes. The reason the oil is so important is you see what's happening here? This is bubbling around it. These up here just sitting here. They're not doing anything to speak of, and that's not good. I know, I've made my share of griddle cakes down through the years, and if it doesn't have lots of grease bubbling around it, something wrong with it. Well, the heck with it, I don't care. I mean, I care, but no, I, don't, you don't. I don't care enough to do much about it. <laughs> well, let's see if this one's doing anything. I, I, is it, there you go. 
Oh. Perfect. And it looks just like a griddle cake should ought to look. And so does this one. And that one. See? See what happens when it doesn't have any oil? Uh -huh. it, it, it doesn't get brown. It gets black. That's not good. Well, I'll swear. No offense. That's really. So there it is. Okay. And that's it. Well, I mean, that's good. all there is to it. Well, There's me, nothing else to it. Let that's me all. whip up my beans, and then you can do your other recipe. Oh, do I have to? Yeah, and maybe you can make some more griddle cakes, because these people are always so hungry. Uh-huh. Now, this is called quickie bean bake. I wouldn't serve it at my own house, I don't think, because it doesn't appeal to me. But <laughs> other people would. Oh, that's nice. Well, I just thought I'd let them know. Uh-huh. But in, it wasn't. Oh, thank heavens. We're not going to humiliate one of our, another, one of our viewers on right. the air. Now, that's about a half a cup of molasses. Which he enjoys doing so thoroughly. Mm -hmm. Molasses. Three tablespoons of vinegar. One, two, Strange three. Strange looking things I ever seen. Three tablespoons of vinegar. Three tablespoons of prepared <laughs> mustard. This is just old salad mustard. Salamander? One. I just lost a piece Two. of my recipe down inside the stove. <laughs> did you really? I did. It went, went down inside the stove and will never be seen again until next year. Probably. So that takes care of the mustard. Probably what I'm smelling today is something that fell in there last week. And a half a teaspoon of Tobasco. I'm going to try some other things here with this. I'm not real happy about this at all. This and thing is working weirdly in my opinion. Well. Now that's down in here in my bowl. Stir this up. I was going to beat it up, but it's liable to make too big a mess, and somebody might have to clean it up. And you know me, I don't. I like to cooperate with the staff and the crew, and put as put as little of work on as possible. Of the week, boys and girls. This has become a fiction right. program. Now that's your seasoning, and to that mm -hmm. we're going to add three cans pounds. Uh, size cans <laughs> of baked beans, which well, doesn't take a college degree to open up. Well, while we're opening those, yeah. do you want to show where uh, yellow vegetables come from? Oh, yeah. Why don't we do that I while mean, I'm I, adding that, these? I've always wanted to know personally, myself, where yellow vegetables come from. Well, I would like to And know. I understand we have some original footage to oh, show good. you right here on where it comes from. Now, this is a continuation of last week. When we showed where green vegetables. When we showed where green vegetables come from, see. We want to compliment this. And now, now here you all, oh, looks like these guys are up to no good. What? Isn't that neat? Look at that. Oh, neat facial ex expression. You can tell he's an actor. And oh, look at that. Isn't that clever? Laban, are you watching any of this? Oh, it's real cute. I'm tickling that pepper that is now going to be a high priced yellow one instead of green. My ears hurt from standing over here. And there it is. That's how they the come about. Isn't that something? Now, I didn't know it until I saw it on television. If you see it on television, it's got to be true. Absolutely. Now, I've added three one-pound cans of plain old baked beans, and now I've got a can of kidney beans that I've got to drain over here into our sink before I add them to... Alfred Hitchcock presents. Well, I'm just trying to show what I'm doing. There uh -huh. it is. Well, you are. You show what you've been doing for the right. last year. <laughs> Eating. I swear. Oh, man. <laughs> so awful. Uh huh. All right, now there. All right, now the, yes, those kidney beans are drained out and they go in. No kidney. No. Now, I've got other things to add, but Larry, you go ahead and Well, and I want to show everyone own. this lovely platter of gorgeous corn cakes. Now, this is corn cakes in the true sense of the word. I've had corn cakes, but I've never had cakes with corn in them. Corn cakes, corn, corn cakes. Corn cakes, corn cakes. Good for you. Eat them. And they are good. I just tried one. Do you have them lips. in the morning with milk over well, them and a little sugar? Anything you want okay. to. You can have them with Madeline in the morning if you want to. Oh. If you're so inclined. I'm going to take it, put it over here gently on the table, and then I'll be back to do my next recipe. Excuse me, I just tripped on my cord. I hate that one. Did you ever trip on your cord in your kitchen at home? <laughs> Excuse me. 
that oil is too hot. And look at that, there's where that pancake went to down in there. Uh -huh. Well now the next thing I'm going to do is Tennessee corn cakes. I guess these get up and walk around right. like a horse. Uh -huh. These things call for another Excuse bowl. <laughs> oh. Sounds like some kind of a game. TV uh, so, show. Uh -huh. so another fun. bowl. Another bowl. The story of, anyway, two cups of self-rising meal. We can get rid of that. That was the last recipe. Two cups of self-rising meal. Oh, Hammerstrom is. I'm sorry, I'm rushing as fast those. as I can, and he's cracking his gum, and I'm nervous, and I got a presentation to do here in a couple of minutes. And okay, there's one, and here comes two. Boink. All right. What's the name of that bank you're trying to? And then we got uh, one and the third cups of generic milk. No label on it. One. And a third cup. I'm going to hold back that third cup, and I'll tell you why in just a couple of minutes. Something just fell on me. Excuse me. <laughs> Something just fell off the thing here. Then we got uh, one to two tablespoons of sugar. <gasps> it's in the green container. One to two tablespoons. One. Oh, that was the salt. Two. Har, har. It wasn't really. And a little bit of cooking oil. Now what we've done is we've a quarter of an inch of cooking oil here on the stove. We're heating it up real good right now in a, in a regular pan. You can't do this one uh, on the griddle. A little oil for frying, a quarter of a, an inch of oil in there. And I need a quarter of a cup of chopped onions. And while I chop the onion, we'll go back to Mr. Johnson. Mr. Johnson, we're back with you. Oh, good, because I'm chopping an onion. Oh, for heaven's sake. <laughs> How is it that we could end up both chopping an onion at the same time. Well, I mean, that's the way life is, you know. You Simultaneous some, onion chopping. Some. But anyway, you, you're going to use a half of a medium-sized onion chopped. Oh, I swear. <laughs> we have that new dance troupe in here today uh -huh. from Russia. The blind tap dancers. <laughs> <laughs> oh, how yeah. awful. So anyway. Now, uh, anyway, half of this onion has got to be chopped and goes right into our dish. As soon as I get it done, and <laughs> ding, ding, ding. all right, now, that one needs to be chopped a little better. All right, now. I, here, too, am chopping. All right, all right, now, there goes my half a chopped onion into this, and now, here is a half a pound of weenies that have been chopped. Beg your pardon? Half a pound of weenies. Huh. Well, it sure is. Mm-hmm. And we got those. Looks and like about a half a pound of them. Here is a cup of chopped. Ham. This was ham, and a nice lean ham, and I got it, put it in the food processor at home, and chopped it up real fine. Well, and all of this goes in here, and we're going to stir it up real good. And this is all that you have to do to this dish, because then you put it in a three-quart casserole, huh. and bake it for about an hour at 375 degrees. So this is our main course. And I've got one in the oven that should have cooked, but I got one in the oven. Uh-huh, but I'm afraid it hasn't. Now, when the other one comes out, I've got to chop up now real finely this other half of onion because it gets decorated with the raw onion around the edge when you take it out of your oven. So I'll do that. Larry, it's all yours. Well, this takes a little bit of time. Now, that's just a little bit too thick, the consistency of that. Look at that. Look at that. I don't need six minutes. See, isn't that nice? Now, it does need the additional one-third milk. I usually hold back just a little bit on pancake mix because sometimes you can do what's called drown the miller. That's what they used to call it up where I come from. That means you put too much in there and get it too runny. That's not good. This is more of a consistency of a nice pancake batter. Now I have added a quarter of a cup of, of, of finely chopped onions in there. Now we got this stuff and it's red hot. Now what we're going to do is just ladle a little bit in there. Like so. And you're just going to have to watch it because this is red hot. I mean, Johnson, if you were to put your lips in that, mm, it would just be a mess. Now, there we go. Well, it's, it's going to hang on to it, and it is ultra, ultra hot, so we're going to have to watch it very, very carefully, lest it burns up right before your very eyes. 
You want to look at these recipes? Oh, we could, I guess. Let's look at the recipes. My corn cakes. Uh, roll of Ritz crackers. These are ones I made a while ago from a three-roll box. Can of cream corn. Two eggs. Beaten salt and pepper oil for frying. Tennessee corn cakes. Two cups of self-rising cornmeal. Those are the ones I'm doing on the stove right now. One to third cups of milk. Quarter of a cup of chopped onion. Uh, half a teaspoon of table Tease, tablespoon of sugar, <laughs> one tablespoon of cooking oil, and oil for frying. And that's it. That's all there is to it. And the quickie bean bake, half Ooh. a cup of molasses, three tablespoons of vinegar, three tablespoons of prepared mustard, oh. a half teaspoon of uh, Tabasco, three pound, three one pound cans of baked beans, Ooh. three one pound, or, or a one pound can, mm. get my teeth right mm. in a minute, mm of kidney beans drained, half pound of frankfurters cut in one inch pieces, a cup of diced cooked ham, and one medium onion chopped and divided. I want you to look at this, Johnson. Isn't this beautiful? Oh, they are lovely. They really are Gorgeous. just pretty. The only thing that worries me is they look like they're just sodden with oil. Well, maybe you didn't have your oil hot enough. No, it was, you wouldn't want it any hotter than that. It instantly got brown. I mean, you get it any browner than that, you're in big trouble. I would suggest you maybe I have just a little too much oil in there, maybe just a little less, although it's supposed to take care of the top and bottom simultaneously. Yeah, right. And, uh, but anyway, it's the nature of cornbread to sort of soak up anything, so I reckon that's why it's doing it. But anyway, there you have it. Isn't that pretty? That's a pretty cake. Very, very lovely. I think, and you can smell those onions. It kind of, it smells a little bit like uh, a potato cake. Uh-huh. With the onions in there and everything. Mr. Oh, potato Mr. Cake. Potato Mr. Potato Cake. So there they are, sweet potato cakes. There they are. I'm going to make up a couple more because I had such a good time doing those. Well, I've got to take mine out of the oven now even though it's not ready. No, this is plenty hot, this stuff is. You wouldn't want it any hotter than that, you'd burn it. Because it's got to get done inside a little bit. It takes a few minutes to do that. Ooh, that does look pretty. And look at them wieners floating around in there. Good heavens. It smells fabulous. Look at that. Yeah. A very lovely presentation has been had by all here at the TV station. Well, this pancake thing is pretty neat. I, I must say, you've, uh, you people out there that sent these recipes in have done extraordinarily well. Now, Larry, with mine, uh, you need to put all around the out, outer rim of it these chopped onions. So I'll just sprinkle them around. I got that one too big. This is an onion lover's delight. You don't want to get these things too big. You get them too big, yeah. they get unmanageable. And you go to flip them, they fly all to pieces. Uh -huh. This is the ideal size. Sort of like any you kind do. of a pancake. This one right over here. When you get here. unmanageable. What? And it's just sort of like you do when you get unmanageable. See what a mess that one is? That's the one that Laban wanted me to do. This is the one I came up with. Isn't it pretty? It's perfect in every way. It's just the right size. It's beautiful. It really is. It really is. Really, really, is. really is. Really, really is. Are we ready to eat? I thought I'd bring well, it over here. Oh wait, oh, wait a minute. Miss Witch. Miss Witch had flown oh, in. Oh, yeah. come on in here, honey. Come on in, baby. Hit me with it, baby. One time sugar pie. I'm afraid I'm going to put she? my eye out with this grease. Ooh. Oh, good heavens. Come here. Miss Witch, ladies and gentlemen, has just arrived upon these premises. And what well, does she say? I don't know. Dear guys, yeah. could you do some more chicken recipes? Yeah. I hope so. Mm. They are so good for you and healthy mm. and usually easy mm. and cheap. Mm. And my husband mm. Rupert is one because he won't touch my chicken marmalade. <laughs> Thanks. And it's from Betty Cackle in Tupelo, Mississippi. Betty Cackle, did you uh -huh. ever? Well, here, try one of these onion jobs. These are beautiful. They really are. Well, here, let me... Uh, and one of these. Let me serve you some... Oh, I know they're good because I've tried them while I was cooking them. And if you'll just give me some of that, I'll, I'll give them a, a try along with one of these fine corn cakes. This one's a little bit heavy. These, these one with the real corn in, so you have to handle them with care. Mmm. I like that. And your recipe is excellent, too. Good baked beans. Very nice. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, there you have it. That's it. 
Who would have thought such a fabulous show would be that easy? It was wonderful. Bye, everybody.